This is the next evolution of my ultimate self-hosted game streaming setup. If you've seen some of my previous videos, you'll know that I've already tried a couple of iterations of this type of game streaming setup in the past, where I set up my gaming PC to be able to stream all my games and emulators in one place to a broad selection of client devices. The reasons why someone might want to do this are numerous, but the short list is this. One, you have all your games and emulators in one place. You can utilize your most powerful hardware to run all of your games and never worry about transferring or syncing save data between different devices. Plus, you can take the opportunity to organize all of your games into one nice, neat front end. Two. You can utilize the hardware you already own. Game streaming apps are available on most major devices like iOS, Android, tvOS, Google TV, and even PS Vita. So you can save money by using the devices you already own instead of running out to buy new hardware like a Steam Deck or other device that may or may not run all of your games anyways. 3. Comfort and Flexibility once you've set this up, you can choose when and how you want to play your games. You can still play at your desk with your monitor, mouse, and keyboard like usual, or you can play out and about with your phone, you can play on your couch with your TV, or you could even play lying in bed using a cheap Amazon projector. The sky is the limit when coming up with your ideal way to play your games. But this new method I've been trying is better than my previous attempts in almost every way. So of course I wanted to make a new game streaming video to showcase this new method to you. But first, I just want to preface this video by saying this time around, I am utilizing a paid software. It's called Launchbox Premium and it costs 30 US dollars. This video is not sponsored or anything. It's just a new software I wanted to try, so I paid for it myself. There are a few payment tier options that you can look at, but essentially it's a $30 US one-time payment to buy into this software. So if you're not looking to spend any money whatsoever, that's okay. You can click off of this video and watch one of my other game streaming videos which utilize totally free services. Of course, I'll link those in the description as well. But if you're still with me, that means you've probably tried those other previous methods as well. And like me, you've probably ran into your fair share of frustrations with the limitations of those methods. So you end up slapping more and more workarounds on top of each other to try to patch up those limitations. But then you end up spending your valuable gaming time troubleshooting your setup instead of actually playing those games. At this point, you're probably looking for less legwork, more polish, and you're not afraid to let go of $30 to let that happen. So this is where LaunchBox Premium comes in. Just an FYI, there is a free version of LaunchBox available, but for this project, we are going to need to take advantage of at least two of the special features that only come with LaunchBox Premium. So unfortunately, if you went to the LaunchBox website already and you were thinking you might be able to get away with the free version for this setup, we will actually be needing the premium features for this video. So let's head to the website now. So here's the LaunchBox website. It's launchboxapp.com. And of course, I'll leave the link in the description. If you've never heard of LaunchBox before, take your time to look around the site and get to know it. But if we scroll down here at the very bottom, we'll see LaunchBox Premium. The first premium feature that we need is called Big Box. It's a gamepad controllable UI that's akin to Steam Big Picture in some ways. It will allow us to control LaunchBox completely with a controller and pass those inputs to our games and emulators. And the second premium feature we need is called Pause Screens, which, as the name suggests, allows Big Box access to some extra options by pausing the game or emulator. The most important of these extra options, of course, being the ability to close emulators bringing you back to big box. If you've set up emulators for use while streaming before, you'll know this is usually a major pain point as not every emulator can be closed with the same hotkeys. So in the past, I ended up setting up each emulator's hotkey to different controller bindings using a software like Rewaz, which technically worked, but it quickly became too difficult to remember which hotkeys would close which emulators. But with big box pause screens, that's no more. You just pause the game, select exit game, and then you're back to the big box game selection screen. Speaking of which, when it comes to the big box game selection screen, we are not just limited to the one theme, which is a common complaint of Steam Link and its big picture mode. Steam has just the one look going for it. It's fine for the most part, but it leaves some customization to be desired. Another popular game organizer, Playnite, has lots of themes, but has no pause screen or overlay capabilities like Big Box or Steam Link. So even though Big Box doesn't have a huge amount of themes available, it focuses on quality over quantity, which I can appreciate. I really like this minimalistic theme called Colorful Dark, but if you're not a fan, I'm sure one of the other big box themes will do the job for you. So if we keep scrolling down, we can see the licensing options start at just 30 US dollars. The forever license is 75 US dollars, and there is options to upgrade your license to a forever license. So to get started, I just bought the $30 license myself, but you're welcome to pick whatever option you like. So at this point, feel free to set up LaunchBox to your heart's content. Add your PC games, connect your services, add in your emulators, change your theme, etc. 
I am not going to show you a step-by-step -step on how to do this right now because it'll be different for all of you depending on what games you have and I want to focus on the topic of this video which is focused on the streaming aspect. There's already plenty of tutorials on how to set up Launchbox, even some published by Launchbox themselves, which if you listen to the voice in those videos is one of my favorite YouTubers, ETA Prime. So they've been working together to make these tutorials available to you. So of course, I'll leave those links in the description. So once you've set up everything to your liking on your gaming PC, the next step is to launch BigBox just to make sure everything's running like it should. And as you can see, I've got all my systems listed here. I've got them all set up and I've made sure that they're all working with a controller on my local PC before I start streaming. And obviously coming up with ROMs is up to you. I'm just showcasing how to stream the emulators once you've set them up. So once you've got BigBox set up on your gaming PC, how do you stream it to your other devices? Well, I thought you'd never ask. Close out of BigBox, back to the internet. My streaming method of choice at the moment is a combination of sunshine and moonlight. Here's how it works. You install Sunshine on your host device, which is your gaming PC. Once installed, it just runs as a service, which starts when your PC starts, so it's always ready to stream games even if your PC has just restarted. Moonlight is its client application. So once Sunshine is set up on your gaming PC, which we'll walk through in a minute, you just download the Moonlight client on whatever device you want to stream to. If we scroll down here, you can see that the Moonlight client is available on all kinds of devices. The Moonlight client app is available on Android, iOS, even PS Vita, so odds are you will already own a device that the Moonlight client works on. The setup for Moonlight and Sunshine will mostly be the same for all of you watching, so I will cover that right here, right now. The first step is to download and install Sunshine. So if we just scroll down the page, we can see the download link right here. Open that and it'll bring you to the latest version. Scroll down, keep scrolling, and you'll see a list of assets. Make sure you've clicked show all. And because we're running Windows, we're going to use the Sunshine Windows installer. Click that to download. It only takes a second. So once it finishes, just click open. On my machine, of course, it says Sunshine is already installed. But if you just follow the prompts, it's super easy to install. Once it's installed, you'll see Sunshine running as a service in your system tray. It looks like this. Right click on its system tray icon and you'll see an option for open Sunshine. You might get a message like this saying that your connection isn't private. That's okay. Just hit advanced and continue to localhost. And if you've never set up Sunshine before, it'll ask you to create a username and password. So do that now. I'm going to put in my username and password. And now you're looking at the Sunshine Web GUI. If you've never hit a web GUI before, don't worry, it's not that complicated. It's really actually very easy. Essentially what it means is the devs have put the control for this project right here on the web so it's easy for you to access from your computer on your local network. Anyways, make sure to remember that password or write it down somewhere because you'll need it to access Sunshine whenever you pull it back up. So you'll see some tabs along the top row, but really we're only gonna focus on two pin and applications. Applications is where we will add our big box client to our sunshine service and pin is where we will pair our moonlight clients. So on the applications by default, you will see desktop and steam big picture in here. You can either just leave them there or remove them, but either way we will add big box to this list to get started. Click add new. As you can see, I put the application name as big box. And if you scroll down under detached commands, Simply type the location path of wherever your big box executable is installed on your computer. For me, it just happens to be under my user folder, under a folder called launchbox, and then bigbox.exe. So it's probably something similar for you, but just make sure you're using the right location path. So that's all you need to get big box on Sunshine. It's pretty easy. Now for the other half of the Sunshine and Moonlight setup, we just need to move on to Moonlight where we'll pair the pin. So I'm just gonna use my iPhone as a quick example. It's really just as easy as going to the app store, searching for Moonlight, finding the Moonlight game streaming app and downloading it. So once you've downloaded the Moonlight app, you just need to pair it to Sunshine. So on your device, simply open the Moonlight app and Moonlight will automatically scan your network for available Sunshine hosts. So if both your devices are on the same network, you should already see your host in this list. Then simply tap on the device to proceed. You'll see a pairing pin pop up on the screen. We just need to input this Moonlight pin into Sunshine for it to pair. So we'll go up to pin and we'll just type this in. And you'll see a pairing successful message. And now you're paired. It's that easy. And we can actually see Big Box and Desktop as the applications available in Moonlight because that's what we have listed here in Sunshine. So that was an example of just how easy it is to pair your Moonlight client with your Sunshine host that we just set up. Okay, so on my phone with my controller connected, you can see that I've got Big Box right here. So I'm just going to tap on that to start it. And as you can see, it's going to start Big Box on my computer right on cue. So now that I've launched Big Box on my Moonlight client on my phone, you can see it's connected to my PC and I can scroll through all my list of emulators really quickly, just like this. And as you can see, I even have recent systems on here like PS3 and Xbox 360 being emulated. So really it just comes down to how powerful your PC is and your graphics card. And if you can run on your PC, then you can stream it to basically any device, which is what I love about this setup. So now that we've got this nice big box front end configured and working, I just wanna show you how cool pause screens are. To enable pause screens, all you have to do is go into the options of Big Box, Scroll all the way down to controller mappings and then scroll all the way down to show pause screen. All you have to do is set your mapping. 
I'm going to hold start and then press select so it does a combination of both. So here's how it works. Say I'm playing a PC game and I want to quit out. No problem, because most PC games have a menu item for quit. But what happens if I'm playing an emulated game? Well, if you're using a program like RetroArch that comes with its own overlay, of course you can quit RetroArch and bring you back to Big Box. But what if you're using a standalone emulator like PCSX2 or Ryujinx here? Well, that is what gets me really excited about LaunchBox Premium Pause Screens because it makes it so easy to quit out of your emulated games. Just press your pause screen hotkey, scroll down, and hit exit game. It's that easy. Now we're back to Big Box. And in this example, you've got some more options as well. Save state, load state. But really, the most exciting option for me is resume and exit game because it brings you right back to LaunchBox. And here's some extra tips and tricks that I'd like to share with you as well. Moonlight supports mouse emulation, which is super handy if there's any prompts that you need to click when your game loads. On a touchscreen device, you can simply drag your finger around like a trackpad. And on a non-touchscreen device, you can hold down the start button to allow your controller's left analog stick to become the mouse. If you need to exit streaming from your client, you can either swipe from the left of your touchscreen device, or on a non-touchscreen device, press LB, RB, start, and select. Once you're back to the Moonlight Client screen on your device, you can tap the same app to either resume the app or quit the app remotely. And one more thing, once you've paired your Moonlight Client to your Sunshine host locally at least once, you can then connect that same client over the internet anytime. So you can take your devices cross-country or even internationally and connect to your gaming PC at home. I've used this setup to enjoy some game time at hotels and Airbnbs across the US, and even once from London, England. You just need a decent internet connection. So there you have it. So thank you for watching. And of course, if you have any questions at all about this game streaming setup, ask them in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer as many as I can. And in the meantime, feel free to subscribe to the channel to watch out for future game streaming videos.